All right, I'm uh, just posting the video to thank Allison McDowell for um, promoting my research. And um, somebody left me a message because they were reading my research on the academia dot edu site that I've been using which is kind of a fake academic site but a, a lot of academics use it but there's there's no um, peer review process or anything um and so Allison McDowell had tweeted out my research and and she also posted on her her WordPress site and um, I had I knew about Allison McDowell because uh, I can't remember how I discovered her but then a close friend of mine also promoted her to me you know told me to check her out and Essentially, she's been researching the um, technocracy, essentially. And her Twitter profile name is something about the, the world brain, which is a term from H.G. Wells that... Uh, I, I originally read that in Jim Keith's research, and then Jim Keith had a mysterious death um, at Burning Man. I guess he got he like fell off a stage or something, and then they claimed his knee got infected in the hospital or something, and then he didn't survive. And then his publisher died soon after that. Um, his name was Bonds. I think it was like Ron Bonds. I think it might have been like Illuminate Press in Georgia or something. So this is over 20 years ago now. And... So Allison McDowell says she she is hopeful that her research will be discovered in 20 years, just like she discovered my research from 20 years ago. And she said that she had discovered it early on, but she didn't appreciate it at first. And I don't know what she means by early on. I'm guessing... You know, that could be just like a few years ago, maybe. I don't know. But now she's she said she just went to the Institute of Advanced Study at Princeton. And she's made these connections to um, a Harvard sociology professor and also a, a research institute in Japan. So she's really taken... The research seriously she's building on the the expose that I wrote um, that got I published it in 2001 soon after I began using the internet the interwebs and then it got it got picked up a bit at first in 2001 and then somebody else started posting on this this forum and they claimed they were me and I don't know who it was it was someone pretending to be me because it definitely was not me and I, I actually complained about it at work because I thought maybe maybe it was one of my co-workers doing it I don't know I think I think I know maybe who it was it was another reader of mine I'm not sure anyway um <clears throat> It gives me a good excuse if anybody finds my research and freaks out. I can just say, well, 
it wasn't me because you know there's people are using my name and posting all sorts of crazy stuff and that's how the interwebs is you know you don't know who is who and um well i mean alison mcdowell she does have a following and she's real active as far as doing podcasts and live streams and that kind of stuff i mean she's she communicates a lot and she gets interviewed and so I'll, I look forward to checking out more of her research and um but she said that my academia site was quote way beyond her pay grade and it's unfortunate just because the concept of non-commutativity or non-commutative time frequency is, um, it's a basic, it's a simple yet radical concept. And the reason people can't understand it is because we've all been brainwashed by um, symmetric based logic from standard science starting with the Pythagorean theorem and and that's what the the research she discovered um, goes into that and the concept was called the music logarithmic spiral and I actually have an image of it in my latest book so this this video can be a promotional for my my book that is on lulu uh, dot com the uh, book format um i found an old pamphlet a pamphlet that i had made early on probably like 2002 maybe it was 2001 probably was 2001 right when i right when i had discovered this um what i called the actual matrix plan that was a collaboration between Andrea Puharich and Oliver Reiser and then um, Esther Watson Tipple or Tipple Watson, I guess she went by. Anyway, she was she was corresponding with Einstein about music theory and Taoism. And I found a reference that Einstein was greatly impressed by Oliver research, Oliver Reiser's um, applied superstring social engineering plan or whatever. And they were all they were all tied in with the theosoph the Theosophists and the United Nations. And one one person online said they were. They knew these people in New York, and it was no big deal. You know, there was like um, just another quirky, quirky uh, research group in New York and or something with the UN. Just another think tank, and um, I don't know. I mean, if they, according to the research I discovered, they were. Uh, they, it got, it was chartered through the Institute of Advanced Study at Princeton. It was chartered at Princeton. I mean, as far as I can tell, there was, the research was tied in with the CIA and the military, or at least, I mean, with the, Andrea Purich, I don't think he was technically, I mean, Apparently, he could not leave the CIA. I mean, that was, he claimed they burned down his research um, facility. And that was because he had realized he could, he, he had a water-powered car based on this um, music theory secret of the ultrasound splitting the water and creating a reverse time quantum beat, a quantum undertone, 
that is the elf frequency as a negative frequency. And um, I'm currently reading uh, Gunter Nymphs, Nymphs's book on what he calls it zero time space on his uh, super luminal acoustic signals. And it's just a really well written book um, that he co-wrote with this younger uh, female scientist and um, I can't remember her name offhand, but it's like Abigail somebody. And um, he's going through the whole history of science, covering relativity and quantum physics. And anyway, I'm just, I'll finish that book and I'll let you know more about it. Thanks.